Linus Torvalds was just a 21-year-old student in 1991 when he created Linux, the groundbreaking operating system for computers. After developing the system, he posted it on the internet for free, inviting users to download, share, and modify. Its popularity has skyrocketed over the last few years. There are currently more than 12 million Linux users. In addition, tech stalwarts, including Sun Microsystems, Oracle, and IBM, have begun incorporating it into their operations. Today, Torvalds is hailed as a hero by the open source community. His new book is, quote, Just for Fun, the story of an accidental revolutionary. I am pleased to have him here at this table for the very first time. Welcome. Thank you. You really see yourself as, as, as an accident, not as a revol an accidental revolutionary. Well, actually, I, I prefer the Just for Fun title. Yeah, right. The subtitle okay. well, I, I, I didn't love. But I do realize that the whole process of how Linux came to be was, I mean, it was so unplanned. It was, none of it was meant to be. There was no guiding vision on what I want to do. There was none of these that you expect to be in, in yeah. big projects. So I, I've seen the complete accidents and, and most of them very happy. Yeah, and how did, so how did it come to be? Explain the process to those who have not yet read the book but clearly will want to. Well, it initially just started as my own project for my own needs, for my own use. And, uh, and the initial goals were very modest. Actually, the biggest part of the initial goal was just to, just the journey, just actually yeah. doing the programming because right. as a technical guy, that's what I'm most fascinated in. Yeah. Not so much using my own program, but actually creating the yeah. program yeah. in the first place. And then, for various reasons, one of which was, hey, I was at a university, the, the kind of mentality at a university is that you make your work available. Uh, and also I wanted to kind of show people I've, I've been discussing with that, hey, this is what I actually did. Yeah. I made it av available on, on the internet. One of the things that you're very careful to say, and I don't have the quote here, but I had it somewhere. I mean, you don't want to, this myth has grown up about you. Right, right. You help me understand the myth. I mean, that you're some do-gooder, nice. There's, there's this myth that that I did it because I wanted to be the Mahatma Gandhi of, of yes. whatever, the 1990s. <laughs> right. And, and that was I'm here for mankind. <laughs> yes. And that was so untrue yes. that the only reason that I made it available on the internet was really, it made so much sense. sense. That's right. And it would be better and better and better. if you. Well, actually, I didn't even realize that. that. Oh, I, I mean, it took me some time to realize what it really meant. That at first, it was just, I know all these people. I know they're interested in operating system. I'd, I'd been discussing with them. So I knew like five, 10 people who I was sure would be interested in looking at it, what I did. Maybe they would never use it. Mm -hmm. So I just made it available right. because it made sense in the, at the time. Did anybody come to you and say, look, you can be as rich as Bill Gates? They have later. Yeah. Uh, not during the first version because, yeah. I mean, it was, they did it later, was though. much, it was a very limited system at first. Sure, people later on, especially especially when Linux started taking off, right. and people really hadn't gotten the idea of open source, uh, people said, why did you do that? Especially in the US, but also in Finland, that people just did not understand the concept of creating a program because you like program, and did not understand the concept of, hey, sure, I like money, but on the other hand, I'm a programmer. I will get paid. It's not as if programmers go hungry in this world. Uh, so I wasn't worried about money right. and making money. And at the same time, I'd done this project for myself. I didn't want to commercialize it because I didn't want to go through the headaches. And uh, I had no incentives to. to well, there's do another that. thing, too, which you, I know you understand. I, I take it really from the USA Today on the back of the book. It says, Linus Torvalds is a lot like Bill Gates. <laughs> Both are about the same height, <laughs> which I, I love. I, I like that. You know, the point is that's about the only thing you two have in common. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, other we're than both an interest in technology, technology yeah. an interest in technology right. and being smart, right. I mean, those right things. But someone once said about Bill Gates, he's more Rockefeller than Edison. Absolutely. I and, mean, and you're more Edison than Rockefeller. And Bill Gates needed, I mean, to get where Bill Gates is today, he needed to be the business guy who right. knew about technology. Right. I was the technology guy who had no clue about <laughs> business. <laughs> so. And still are or not? Well, I've seen a lot of the businesses grow up around Linux, so yeah. I, I comment on business when, 
when, when uh -huh. people ask me. But so quite frankly, I'm still clueless. And so you, David Diamond writes for who? Uh, David Diamond's been writing for a lot of people. Yeah. He's been at Wired. He's been at uh, Red Herring. I actually met him because he was doing this uh, this story for the local magazine Silicon Valley, and we had a lot of fun doing that story. <laughs> and like the book came about a year and a half later, uh, but but I still remembered the most fun journalist I ever had. Frankly. Was David Diamond. So if the book is not just about just for fun. It's not just about the fun of making Linux. I also wanted to have, I wanted to write the book just for fun. Yeah. So I wanted to have fun writing it. So, and, and I was not going to write it all myself. Uh -huh. So what would I do? I would find somebody I really had enjoyed working with. Is it a smart question or a stupid question to ask, will Linux supplant Windows? It's a hard question to answer. I don't know if it's a smart question to ask. Why is it hard to I answer? I mean, either. You know, well, it's. It will it knows? always be. Who would this knows? just be a niche operating uh, system that. I, I think Linux has a very strong future on the desktop, actually. It's on the desktop? On, including the desktop. Right. I mean, Linux right. already has like uh, a quarter of the uh, web server market or right. more. Right. So, so in, in certain markets, Linux is very strong today. The desktop is obviously. For a lot of reasons, it's a very interesting market. And it's also obvi very obviously a market that Microsoft completely dominates today and makes a lot of money dominating. Uh, and it's a market that a lot of people have tried to enter. I mean, Apple, mm -hmm. uh, IBM tried with OS2. Uh, a lot of the Unix vendors tried. And the only reason like, your average person doesn't even know that they tried is that they failed so horribly. And uh, the reason I, I think Linux actually has a chance and why I feel in five years the situation will be different is that Linux kind of works around the market. It, a lot of people are very interested in the desktop, so a lot of people will be working on all the applications going on the desktop, mm -hmm. making it look nice. And you can really see the, the changes that have been going on in the last few years. Would Linux have met its potential? Without the open source system, no, no. I mean, you, there's no way that you're you even you are smart enough to have given it. People don't realize how what an incredible amount of resources it takes to make just about any software project. I mean, software is hard to write. <laughs> it's yes, uh, if not, <laughs> well, it's like you need you need many programmers even to just do one program, much less create a complete system that you can actually give people a CD, say, OK, install this, and uh, you'll have everything you need. You need like hundreds, thousands of highly paid professionals to do that. And if I hadn't made it available on the internet, that just wouldn't have happened. Mm. I mean, you have big companies, huge companies, that can't afford mm. to do what Linux has done. You have copyrighted it. Um, I and all the people have who, who, who actually have written code for it have copyrighted our code. Actually, you don't have to copyright something. Know, you automatically hold the copyright to whatever work you've done. And what is kind of special about Linux is that it kind of uses a judo trick uh, in, in copyright law, turning the copyright law kind of against itself in saying that, sure, we own the copyright to this. but you get to copy it freely. You can do whatever you want with it. We, yeah, we right, right. You, can, you can use it in any way. You can change it in any way. The only thing we require is that when you change it and you give it to somebody else, you give that somebody else the same rights. Yeah, exactly. So you don't stop with you. The, uh, right. Let me just ask for some impressions, OK? Um, one, a good friend of mine, um, Bill Joy. Mm -hmm. What do you think of him? Well, I actually. I mean, one of the advantages of moving to Silicon Valley was that I got to meet. <laughs> Hang out with Bill people. Joy here, right? Well, I haven't hung out with Bill okay. Joy, but I met him a number of times, and I I really liked him, and he was teaching me about uh, how the sushi the I, I was eating uh, and and the, yeah, right. the green stuff wasn't actually wasabi; it was just horseradish, even though everybody <laughs> calls it wasabi, and and that was a big disappointment in my life. Oh God, and that's so a that's a really so a bummer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, he's actually one of the few nice guys I met. I mean, a lot of the 
like high powered. Yes. Maybe I shouldn't say this. No, oh, yes, you should. Uh, a lot of the high powered people aren't very nice. Really? Yeah. Now, no, uh, well, name some names here. What are we talking no, about? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going back. <laughs> it's just well, usually you're not. You weren't thrilled. If, if you're you, you didn't come away with a great. I mean, when you met when you met Steve Jobs. Right. Well, you said he's everything that people say he is. <laughs> but, he is. but at the same time, I kind of like that. I mean, it's it's well, because he was authentic to what his impre his image. Uh, absolutely, and it's interesting meeting people who are that driven and who live in their own world. I mean, you know, that's true of, of people like Richard Stallman, too, who's one of the mm. gods of open source programming. Right. He's so driven. He's so, he's so self-assured just because he knows what he do, does is right. And it's very interesting meeting people like that. You may not like them <laughs> as people, but, but they're, they're fascinating. Now, is it possible? Suppose that tomorrow you change. You got up tomorrow morning here in New York City. Mm -hmm. And you Actually, said tomorrow morning I will be back. In, in, okay, back where? Uh, back in Silicon Valley, so, San Jose. Okay, let's assume. Okay, so tomorrow morning you get up in San Jose, where they've got right. quite a few millionaire billionaires, right? Right. Less than they used to have. A lot less. Yes. <laughs> a lot less. And you decided I've had it all wrong. You know, a I, we've yeah. got this thing, we've created this thing, and right. enough is enough. <coughs> I'm going for the bucks now. Is it too late? It is. I mean, in, in a very real sense, what I did with the copyright and what I've done knowingly has been to not try to hoard the copyright. So when somebody else makes changes to Linux, I don't ask him to assign the copyright to me. So I actually don't have any rights to a lot of the system except the rights that other people are willing to give me, which are the same rights that I'm willing to give other people. So what you f will find is that nobody can control Linux. I don't have any more rights than you have. Right. If you wanted to, you could buy a Linux CD, you could get it over the internet, you could make your own changes, and you could sell it as your version of Linux. And you could make a lot of money doing it, maybe. Boy, right? you just, well, you, I could just hear all over America people <laughs> saying, what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? Well, the point is really that it means that everybody's very comfortable with me right. because everybody knows that I can't force anybody to do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm known as the, the kind of spare head of Linux. <laughs> I don't have any power to tell IBM, okay, you'd better do this or I will never work for you again. I, I can't do that, mm -hmm. which means people trust me because they know I'm That's powerless. True. There is benefit in this. Yeah. Uh, so what do you want to do? I want to just do interesting things. That's, that's what I've always done. Uh, that's why I moved from like 6,000 miles from Finland to, to Silicon Valley was I went to work for a company that wasn't even talking about what they were doing, which a lot of people felt was strange. Hey, here, here he goes from open source to working for this commercial company, and they're so, so close. Right. They're not even saying what this they're doing. This is a doing. company uh, partially and owned by Paul Allen, isn't it? Well, uh, that, that generated some <laughs> yes. really interesting rumors. <laughs> okay, yes. he's being bought out. Yeah. And and the reason I did it was that I felt that Transmitter was doing something really right. interesting, something that I wanted to do, that something, uh, something fun. I should ask you this, simply for the record, what's the future of Linux over the next five years? I don't know. I don't control the thing. I'm actually, the mm, single nicest thing about Linux, as far as I'm concerned, has been how it has evolved in ways I hadn't expected it to. People are doing things with Linux that I never envisioned. Pe people are doing things with Linux that I'm frankly not that interested in, and that's fine. And it's very interesting to see how people use Linux, even if they use Linux in ways that I would never use it. So I'm hoping that, I mean, in five years, if I were to make a prediction right now, which I'm not going to, if that prediction actually came true, I'd be really disappointed. Part mm -hmm. of it... Because uh, it ought to be unexpected. Yeah, a lot of the fun mm -hmm. has been that, mm -hmm. that people have done things I never expected. What's the best and worst thing you can say about Windows? Well, I don't know. I'm actually not a big Microsoft basher. Uh, I didn't ask you to bash them. I asked you to tell well, me the best and worst thing. Well, you ask me to, to say something bad about them. No, no, I uh, ask you to say what's the best and worst thing you can say about Windows. The best thing is that it's certainly very widely available. And, and it offered... <laughs> and, and people are very used to it. It's oh, like, God. even well, when they don't... Let's try I damning mean, with faint praise. Or well, no, but I mean, people, the way people work yeah. is that they don't care if something is good or bad. They care if, if they... No, no, they care if it's something they're, they're comfortable with. I mean, even the people who curse Windows, they, I mean, I, I know a number of Windows users who, they hate the system. 
they they curse how it crashes that you have to save every time before you print that's like the everybody complains they're still happy because they're used to it right <laughs> 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 uh, that's i mean that's why microsoft is so successful they don't even need to improve it that much because they still have <laughs> 100 million people who are used yeah, to it. Yeah, but that's, I, I, that's I can say the best thing you can say about them is they are out there trying to figure out where the future is. is they're, what they're, very, doing. they're very good at marketing. They're very good at, at um, trying to yeah. see what ha do we have to do to sell this. The bad part about it is that they do have a huge market share. And uh, that means that they can be lazy in certain things. Mm -hmm. They don't have much of a competition on yeah. the desktop, which means that they have very little incentives to really fix some of the problems they do have. Yeah. What do you think of .NET and XML? Who knows? I mean, .NET, I think, is a way to try to sugarcoat the fact that they're trying to move their whole business into this right. pay-as-you-use kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. And I don't know, when I have a house, I'd rather own my house and take and the rent problems yes. than rent it. And I think the same is true of software. Yeah, so you think they may be on the wrong track? That's my personal idea. Yeah. This is going to come as a huge disappointment to those boys. Oh, yeah. They really <laughs> care about what I think about them, right? Right. <laughs> you are terrific. Linus Tarval is creator of Linux and David Diamond, his co writer. Just for fun, uh, you can see why he was attracted to that title by just having a conversation with him. Congratulations. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.